This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Kristen Hughes. Ballads of a Bohemian by Robert W. Service. Book Four, Winter, Part Two. In Picardy, January, 1915. The road lies amid a malevolent heath. It seems to lead us right into the clutches of the enemy, for the star-shells that at first were bursting overhead gradually encircle us. The fields are strangely sinister. The splintered trees are like giant toothpicks. There is a lisping and a twanging overhead. As we wait at the door of the dugout that serves as a first-aid dressing station, I gaze up into that mysterious dark, so alive with musical vibrations. Then a small shadow detaches itself from the greater shadow, and a grey-bearded sentry says to me, "'You'd better come in out of the bullets.' So I keep under cover, and presently they bring my load. Two men drip with sweat as they carry their comrade. I can see that they are all three belong to the Foreign Legion. I think for a moment of Saxon Dane. How strange if some day I should carry him. Half fearfully I look at my passenger, but he is a black man. Such things only happen in fiction. This is what I have written of the finest troops in the Army of France. Kelly of the Legion Now Kelly was no fighter. He loved his pipe and glass. An easy-going blighter who lived in Montparnasse. But mid the tavern tattle he heard some guinea say, when France goes forth to battle, the Legion leads the way. The scourings of creation, of every sin and station, the men who've known damnation, are picked to lead the way. Well, Kelly joined the Legion. They marched him day and night. They rushed him to the region where largest loomed the fight. Behold your mighty mission, your destiny, said they. By glorious tradition, the Legion leads the way with tattered banners flying, with trail of dead and dying, on, on, all hell-defying, the legion sweeps the way. With grim, hard-bitten faces, with jests of savage mirth, they swept into their places, the men of iron worth. Their blooded steel was flashing, they swung to face the fray, then rushing, roaring, crashing, the legion cleared the way. The trail they blazed was gory, few lived to tell the story. Through death they plunged to glory, but, oh, they cleared the way. Now Kelly lay a-dying, and dimly saw advance, with split new banners flying, the fantassins of France. Then up, amid the melee, he rose from where he lay. "'Come on, me boys,' says Kelly, "'the legion leads the way.' Ay, while they faltered, doubting, such flames of doom were spouting. He caught them, thrilled them, shouting, the legion leads the way. They saw him slip and stumble, then stagger on once more. They mocked him trip and tumble, a mass of grime and gore. They watched him blindly crawling amid hell's own affray, and calling, 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 the legion leads the way. And even while they wondered, the battle rack was sundered, to victory they thundered, but Kelly led the way. Still Kelly kept a going, berserker like he ran, his eyes with fury glowing, a lion of a man, his rifle madly swinging, his soul athirst to slay, his slogan ringing, ringing. The legion leads the way. Till in a pit death baited, Where Huns with maxims waited, He plunged, and there blood sated, To death he stabbed his way. Now Kelly was a fellow Who simply loathed a fight. He loved a tavern mellow, Hot grog and pipe alight. I'm sure the show appalled him, And yet without dismay, when death and duty called him, he up and led the way. So in Valhalla drinking, 
if heroes meek and shrinking are suffered there, I'm thinking, tis Kelly leads the way. We have just had one of our men killed, a young sculptor of immense promise. When one thinks of all the fine work he might have accomplished, it seems a shame. But after all, tomorrow, it may be the turn of any of us. If it should be mine, my chief regret will be for work undone. Ah, I often think of how I will go back to the quarter and take up the old life again. How sweet it will all seem. But first I must earn the right. And if ever I do go back, how I will find Bohemia changed, missing how many a face— it was in thinking of our lost comrade I wrote the following. The Three Tommies That Barrett, the painter of pictures, what feeling for colour he had! And Fanning, the maker of music, such melodies mirthful and mad! And Harley, the writer of stories, so whimsical, tender, and glad! To hark to their talk in the trenches, high heart unfolding to heart, of the day when the war would be over, and each would be true to his part, up building a palace of beauty to the wonder and glory of art. Jan's Barrett, the painter of pictures, Jan carcass that rots on the wire. His hand, with its sensitive cunning, is crisped to a cinder with fire. His eyes, with their magical vision, are bubbles of glutinous mire. Poor Fanning! He thought to discover the symphonic note of a shell. There are bits of him broken and bloody, to show you the place where he fell. I've reason to fear on his exquisite ear the rats have been banqueting well. And speaking of Harley the writer, I fancy I looked on him last, sprawling and staring and writhing in the roar of the battle blast. Then a mad gun-team crashed over, and scattered his brains as it passed. Oh, Harley and Fanning and Barrett, they were bloody good mates of mine. Their bodies are empty bottles. Death has guzzled the wine. What's left of them's filth and corruption. Where is the fire divine? I'll tell you, at night in the trenches— as I watch and I do my part, three radiant spirits I'm seeing, high heart revealing to heart, and they're building a peerless palace to the splendor and triumph of art. Yet alas, for the fame of Barrett, the glory he might have trailed, and alas for the name of Fanning, a star that beaconed and paled. Poor Harley, obscure and forgotten. Well, who shall say that they failed? No, each did a something grander than ever he dreamed to do. And as for the work unfinished, all will be paid their due. The broken ends will be fitted, the balance struck will be true. So painters and players and penmen, I tell you, do as you please. Let your fame outleap on the trumpets, you'll never rise up to these, to three grim and gory Tommies, down, down on your bended knees. Daventry, the sculptor, is buried in a little graveyard near one of our posts. Just now our section of the line is quiet, so I often go and sit there, stretching myself on a flat stone I dream for hours. Silence and solitude. How good the peace of it all seems. Around me, the grasses weave a pattern, and half hide the hundreds of little wooden crosses. Here is one with a single name. Aubrey. Who was Aubrey, I wonder? Then another. To our beloved comrade. Then one which has attached to it in the cheapest of little frames the crude water-colored daub of a child, three purple flowers standing in a yellow vase. Below it, painfully printed, I read, To my darling papa, thy little Odette. 
and beyond the crosses many fresh graves have been dug. With hungry open mouths they wait. Even now I can hear the guns that are going to feed them. Soon there will be more crosses, and more and more. Then they will cease, and wives and mothers will come here to weep. Ah, peace so precious must be bought with blood and tears. Let us honor and bless the men who pay, and envy them the manner of their dying, for not all the jeweled orders on the breasts of the living can vie in glory with the little wooden cross the humblest of these has won. The Trois Jacques Says Boldy MacGregor fra Glasgow, to Hickey MacCrimmon fra Skye, That's wit a hit mest about fechtin, it makes ye so devilish dry. No just hae a keek at yon firm house, them Germans a poundin' so fine. We'll think o' it down in the dunny, there's bottles and bottles o' wine. A hell's fairly belchin' out yonner, but o' oh, lad, I'm etlin' to try. If it's puss, she'll be with ye whatever, says Hecky MacCrimmon fra Skye. Says Baldy MacGregor fra Glasgow, Whit price for a funeral wreath? We're dodgin' a kinds of destruction, and jist by the skin o' our teeth. Here, spread your salute on your belly, and slither along in the glore. Confound ye, ye big healin' devil, ye don't realize there's a war. Ye think that you're back in Dunfagin, and herdin' the wee bits o' kai. She'll never drink wine in Dunfagin, says Hecky MacCrimmon fra Sky. Says Baldy MacGregor fra Glasgow, thank goodness, the firm house at last. There's no muckle left but the cellar, and e'en that's vanishin' fast. Look out, there's a corpse or a woman, Sir Mangled and did by her lane. Quick, strike a match. Wit did I tell ye, a hale bonny box o' champagne. Just knock the heat off a bottle. Hold on, man, I'm hearin' the cry. She'll think it's a ween that was greetin', says Hecky MacCrimmon fra Skye. Says Baldy MacGregor fra Glasgow, My conscience, I'm hanged but your richt. It's ye know the waifs o' the warfield, a sobbin' and shakin' with fricht. Wish no, dear, we're no going to hurt ye. We're taking ye hame, me we do. We've got to get back with her, Hecky. Wit mercy we did not get foo. We'll no touch a drap o' that liquor. That's hard, man, ye canna deny. It's the last thing she'll think o' denying, says Hecky MacCrimmon fra Skye. Says Baldy MacGregor fra Glasgow. If I should get struck for the rear, you'll tack and you'll shield the wee lassie, and rin for the lines like a deer. God, wist that the breen jaw bullet? I'm thinking it's crack at my spine. I'm doon on my knees in the globber. I'm fearin', old man, I've got mine. Here, quick, pit your arms round the lassie. No rin, lad, good luck and good bye. Hoots, man, at your baith she'll be taken says Hecky MacCrimmon fra Skye. Says Corporal Muckle fra Rannock, Is that no a picture to frame? T'was sair wounded jocks wi' lassie, Just like my wee genie at hame. We're prudy a my brave heroes, We'll gi' ye a medal, I think, Says Baldy MacGregor fra Glasgow, I'd rather ye gied me a drink, I'll no speak for private MacCrimmon, But, oh man, I'm perish and dry. She'll wish that Loch Leafen was whiskey, says Hecky MacCrimmon fra Skye. End of Book Four, Winter, Part Two.